I just checked my student loans because I needed to get the information to someone and what the f I started with 80,000. I have been paying for 10 years. Last year, I paid 6,000 lump sum because that's really the only way to get it low. Uh, that took it down to 76,000 after I'd been paying for nine years. The grand total is I have paid $120,000 and I still owe 76. How the f is this possible? I think I might be late to the game learning about this. Do you have student loan debt? or are you using student loans to get through school now? If so, stay tuned and I'm gonna show you the best way to eliminate all that school debt. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Money Show. My name's Bailey and I'm here to help you get your money right. Today we're gonna talk about the horrible truth behind the student loan crisis and we're gonna explain how to save thousands of dollars on interest. One thing a lot of people don't know is this really is a crisis. Today, Americans carry on average $35,359 in student loan debt. That's a 26% increase in five years and a 2% increase compared with the first quarter of 2018. The US student loan debt now sits second behind the mortgage industry at $1.49 trillion. That's more than the total US auto loan debt currently at $1.13 trillion, and credit card debt, which sits at $1.04 trillion. One college in particular which experienced a large increase in student tuition is the University of Tennessee. From 1982 to 2018, college costs at UT grew by 1,430%, while the median income grew by 213%, and minimum wages grew by 116%. This drastic increase in tuition and compared to the average household income has led to only one result, taking out more loans. Now, that's a lot we just told you, so let's look at the big picture. So college tuition is going up in price and our income is staying lower, which really, how are people gonna afford to go to college? I went and I borrowed a little bit, but you it's really hard to make ends meet when you get in that situation. Like it was to the point where I was eating peanut butter and crackers for dinner because I was paying my bills, paying for my college, paying for everything. And that's not really a fun life to live. So people are gonna borrow more so they don't have to make the sacrifices to do that. So that raises the question, is the investment really working? I mean, you can, fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, your table moves? Yeah. Dude, somebody's head fell off. <laughs> I didn't break it. Sorry. You can super glue it. Look at this. No, it's not going back on. So that raises the question, is the investment working? Well, in reality, well, this isn't my opinion, but also a lot of college degrees, the jobs will not pay for how much you put into college. Like my mom's best friend, she went for years to be a teacher and she's now 45 about and she's still paying off her student loans, which blows my mind. The student loans are something you can literally be paying off for life. And unless you have a very high paying job, you're not gonna pay them off anytime soon. On the other hand, doctors, lawyers, engineers are always highly needed jobs that the salary will always be worth the debt. Although education is the key to success, it takes a lot of time effort and a, doesn't guarantee an outcome. Like it doesn't guarantee a job. It doesn't guarantee that you're gonna even finish school or you're gonna get the grades for what you're going for. And a lot of it, like if you can't pass the school, you're not gonna get the job, it's simple as that. One of the biggest issues is that the young, they don't realize the consequences of taking out all this money. They think just because they're taking it out, they're gonna be able to finish college with a degree they're gonna get the job they want. They're gonna be able to do all of it. In all reality, I went to college for three years, Dean's List and everything, but I failed one test and I never got the job that I was going for. You might have heard of occupational therapy. It's a very selective program where I'm from. And basically I wasted 20 grand on school. I only borrowed four, but I had no life while I was working paying majority of it. And yet I paid 20 grand for school and I have nothing to show for it, like at all. Like 
I have a good dean's list on my, like, if you look back at my grades, but I literally have nothing to show for. I got some cool knowledge, but college was literally, I hate to say it like this, but it was the worst time of my life. I hated it. It was just a lot of no free time. I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. I always either had to be at work or school. And then when you're not doing either of those, you're sleeping because you need the sleep because you're so sleep deprived. And some people, like, they pass that test, they're a good test taker, which I'm not. Awesome for them, they get the job, but who knows if they're even gonna be able to get a job when they get out of the school. Like a lot of my friends that graduated from OTA, Occupational Therapy Assistant, they can't even find a job for what they went to school for. So school, going to school and taking out these loans is not necessarily promising. It, it's awesome you can move if you want to move around, but a lot of people want to stay to their home roots. They don't want to move around and go explore. In order to better visually understand how student loans and interest rates work, we've broken down three examples for you. The first example is a student who completes his undergraduate degree with $35,000 in student loan debt with a 4.53% interest rate. If this student were to make the minimum payment every month, over 10 years, he will pay $8,588.89 in interest on top of the $35,000 in total principal payback. Let's say after completing their undergrad, they decide they want to go to grad school. This student then takes out $100,000 with a 7% interest rate. If you look at this amortization schedule, the student will pay $39,330.18 in interest over those 10 years. But what happens if they don't pay it off in 10 years? Some student loan terms go as far as 25 years. Assuming the student made a minimum payment for 25 years, they will pay a total interest of $112,033.76 on top of their total principal of $100,000. When looking at these three examples, make sure you take into consideration the fact that they are all based on on-time payments. These charts do not take into consideration factors such as late payments, penalties, additional fees, or whether the loan was subsidized or unsubsidized. If the loan is unsubsidized, that means that it begins accruing interest as soon as you take it out your freshman year. So now that you see the impact of compound interest, how can you pay it off quicker? We pulled a list to help you pay off your student loan debt. First, set up a monthly budget looking at this loan as your first fixed expenses. Second, try living at home with a or with a friend. Third, live like you're still in school. Fourth, don't increase your consumption as you increase the income. Fifth, be different than everyone else. Don't be a statistic. Now, in all reality, those are really great ways to help pay off your student loan. So I do suggest following those, like having a roommate is way cheaper than living on your own. Like I have a two bedroom. I'm paying a little bit of my school loan still back but it would be easier if I had a roommate. I have a two bedroom to myself, two bedroom, two bathroom, but I am paying 1200 just by myself in rent. So in all reality, that is a good way. And you don't wanna live the bougie lifestyle of just spending, 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 because if you're spending more, you're just gonna keep going deeper into debt because all the interest is gonna build up on your student loans. So you wanna always start paying on that as soon as you can. Let's look at the bigger picture. The faster you pay off your student loans, the more money you'll have in the future and you'll be able to save more. So like Dave Ramsey says, live like no one else today so you can live like no one else in the future, which that means save up as much as you can so you can spend more in the future. You wanna be able to have more money help put back in case of emergencies. You wanna be able to have money when you need it. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in on The Money Show. I gotta go pay the rest of my student loans. So click subscribe and we'll keep you updated on how to get your money right. Okay, let's talk about why we need a new college education system. I'm interviewing for a job that would give me $50,000 a year, and minus state and federal taxes, I would have about $35,000 left over, which means I would have $2,900 per month. Rent and utilities in the city I'd be living in is around $1,100 a month. The cost of food, if you're frugal, can be about $240 a month. And then here's the kicker, my minimum loan payment is $1,700 a month. Not to mention I have a car, so I have a $195 car payment and a $45 car insurance payment, which means that my total expenses equal $3,300 a month. 
which means I actually would need $400 extra dollars for a second job. My loan payments cost more than every other expense I have per month combined. This is after my parents paid for a semester for me and a scholarship and be getting free room and board. Everyone says go to college because you'll get a better job that pays more, but I can't cover minimum expenses. If $50,000 a year can't cover my loans, it costs too much. Do you guys want to see something really f***ed up? Uh, my tuition for this fall is going to be $10,760, but my cost of attendance is going to be $28,000. I'm paying $4,500 for board, um, $960 for books, even though I buy my own books, $240 for the cub, which is like a student center, which I'm not even going to be able to use because I'm at home, $196 for the Chinook, again, another student facility I won't be able to use because I'm stuck at home. $488 for a health fee, again, I'm at home. $10 media fee, $2,108 for miscellaneous living expenses. $7,350 for room. I'm in my room. Why do I gotta pay? seven grand for it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.